Hello, everybody. Welcome back for another video. Hope you're all doing well and that you're all having a great day. Likes, comments, and subscriptions are always appreciated as they do help out the channel. And without further ado, let's jump right into it. Yeah, so remember that conversation that we were having last Wednesday, last Thursday, and then on Friday as well, as to uh, getting to the end of that very tight range in Bitcoin's price. Well, here's part two. For those of you who do not know, the cryptocurrency market is currently, at the time of me making this video, I don't want to say the word collapsing, but is falling heavily to one side might be a bit easier. It says no bottom is in sight yet as Bitcoin's price has plummeted below, or, or sorry, slumped, excuse me, below $25,000 for the first time since December 2022. Expectedly, the altcoins keep suffering more with several double digit losers. As such, the liquidations are up to half a billion dollars worth of losses. So, as always, I give you the entirety of the news. I try not to sugarcoat it just because I think you need to hear it in a more uh, realistic light. Uh, I've seen and have read and have noticed a lot of people doing this really weird for years now. Uh, this bear and bull kind of nonsense. Well, the bears are attacking the the, 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 the the things right now, but the prices are going to go back up because the bulls are always... No, this is happening because of other reasons. Uh, you can view the people causing said events as bears or other people who want the prices to go up as bulls. Uh, but understand that something far larger than our market is currently taking place. And I'm going to take you through the entirety of of why the cryptocurrency market is currently slumping down. It says Ether drops below $1,400, pummeled by U.S. inflation and difficulty bomb setback. So, the first part. I'm not exactly sure why exactly uh, this has a negative effect on the cryptocurrency space. The idea of the U.S. dollar being inflated more than we presumed that it was going to be before is typically seen as a good thing for the cryptocurrency market, i.e. the dollar's doing bad. We need a new form of currency. Oh, look over there. There's cryptocurrency. Let's put our money into that as a hedge against inflation. This is at least what the cryptocurrency market was marketed as. Uh, for since around 2013 or somewhere around there. Uh, inflation is bad all around the world. Uh, I think this is having a negative effect on the cryptocurrency market because I believe that a massive portion of people in the cryptocurrency space are not true believers, if you will. They are here for the money. And with U.S. inflation going up, and European inflation going up, and African nation inflation going up, all over the place inflation continuing to rise. Uh, world markets are not doing very well as people are a little afraid of where they have their money and if they're going to be making returns. The slip side of that is a lot of people from the old markets are now in our markets trying to make very quick money. So when they see the other markets panicking, they begin to make this market panic as well. The second part being, yeah, uh, I feel like we should have all known. It seems so obvious in hindsight, but I, I think we keep believing in this project and that the people who are working on it. Now, once again, I do not code. I am not a coder. Um, however, I've been following Ethereum since around 2015, beginning of 2016. These are real time frames, by the way. And I just kind of stuck with it as a, oh, it's definitely going to happen because they keep saying that it's going to happen. But alas, Ethereum network developers have decided to delay the difficulty bomb, a major step leading up to the highly anticipated merge upgrade 
for the Layer 1 blockchain. You heard that correctly. They set the delay to happen for two months in order, they say, to be sure that we sanity check all the numbers before selecting an exact delay and deployment time. This is according to core developer Tim Biko, B-E-I-K-O, in a Sunday tweet. Here it is right here, he said. This was contentious, to say the least. Again, recommended watching the live stream for the back and forth. How much pressure is the right amount to put clients under? The impact of block times on users and of proof of work on the environment all came up, and then he left a smiley that was sweating. In short, he said, we agreed to the bomb delay. We were already over time, and we want to be sure that we sanity check all the numbers before selecting an exact delay and deployment time. But we are aiming for around a two-month delay and for the update to go live late June. A lot of this is very confusing because there are supposed to be many upgrades happening and they're not specifying exactly which one that they mean. The idea of the difficulty bomb, and it used to be called the Ice Age, I assume they got in trouble with the people who made the movie, was to, as it says here, de-incentivize people from using the old chain. This has happened across many other blockchains. This is not an Ethereum exclusive kind of thing. It's the idea that you have one chain, the chain gets split, or something happens or upgrades in some sort of way. Uh, people are still able to take the old code, if you want to look at it this way, and continue building on top of the old blocks. Uh, however, the people from Ethereum do not want that to happen. They do not want another Ethereum Classic-esque type of situation where we get an Ethereum Classic 2, and they simply want the proof-of-stake chain to be the only chain. So they, they created something called the Ice Age to basically freeze, think of it that way, the other chain. Basically, anyone wanting to use the old chain, sure, you can go do it, but it's basically going to take you a thousand years to be able to mine one block you kind of get it. If uh, it dramatically increases the difficulty for miners to verify transactions on the network, thus reducing profitability for proof-of-work mining. Eventually, it will become impossible for physical miners to validate a block. The difficulty bomb is a feature of the network added to the code in 2016. 2016? 2016. As planned for the merge... Uh, to become the, it, it was known as Ethereum 2, uh, were being formed. I told you this a thousand times. Ethereum 2.0, not consensus layer as it's trying to be called now, uh, was planned to happen at the end of 2016, beginning of 2017. And this is what I said. I, I think we all collectively, or many of us who are into Ethereum, own Ethereum or many other projects on Ethereum, I think just assumed that they would be telling the truth because you can find the articles that there was going to be the upgrade in 2017, middle of 2017, end of 2017, beginning of 2018, 2019, 2020 is going to be the year when we have the upgrade, middle of 2020, end of 2020, beginning of 2021, need I continue on? So, um... As it stands right now, I believe that this is actually a major reason why Ethereum and the rest of the cryptocurrency market fell really hard. Around Friday, Saturday, somewhere around their day, uh, the cryptocurrency markets began to fall because of other markets falling as well. It wasn't quite as dramatic as the moment when we heard from the developers that they're going to be setting back the Ice Age a little bit more. Part of the issue is this, in essence, there's been no confirmation of. This, in essence, means that the August time frame for the upgrade, once again, may also be pushed back. Yeah, see, right, exactly. So that's why the price fell. I think that people are losing and have already lost a ton of faith in Ether and Ethereum, and the entire project, because uh, I mentioned this before. I, if you've been here for years, you might remember this. I had a friend uh, who used to work very closely, or no, I would say very closely, uh, with the people from Cardano. 
He wasn't an investor. He was simply one of the people behind the scenes who was kind of like a a moderator or a not a hype man. I don't really know what to call it. And he told me many times that he had a number of discussions with people who were higher up. Once again, this is what I heard from a friend. And I guess I have to throw in allegedly because, you know, that's just how times are. Uh, He told me that on many occasions when... Remember when Cardano was supposed to have had upgrade, 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 and none of them kept on taking place. He said he was hearing from other people in his area... Uh, that these upgrades were not that they weren't going to happen. It's simply that uh, there was no actual time frame for them, but they gave a time frame to the public to kind of calm a lot of people who were out there. For those of you who, once again, don't remember those days, uh, Cardano kind of was the, uh, the person standing in the corner who everyone made fun of because they always said, we're going to have an upgrade in February. And by the time it was May, they said, no, 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 in February, we said the word February because it was a month. Next upgrade coming in September, when it finally hit September. September's a time frame that we gave all of you because it sounded like a good time frame for the network. However, we need a couple more weeks. December's going to be it. And this was a thing for years and years and years and years. This is why whenever we get Cardano news, you hear me going, ah, okay, they're actually doing it. Because Cardano for years kept on saying that date. No, I'm sorry, that date. Bringing it all back, um, this cannot go on forever. I think we continue to see a lot more um, other coins out there who are meant to kind of uh, take over Ethereum's place. And I'm actually quite shocked that they have not done so at this point. I'm actually very surprised uh, that a number of other networks haven't been chosen by the by the rich as the new place where they're going to put all their faith in. Uh, Because if we get any kind of... Hear me out here. I'm telling you what's going to happen. I think prices fell because of a number of factors that happened over the weekend. We are also going to go over them. I think a major portion of our market also fell quite dramatically because of this Ethereum news. I told you all before, if Ethereum skyrockets... Every other coin is tied to Ether as a trading pair. They will also rise. If Ethereum falls, they will also fall with it. If we get news by the end of July, middle of July, July 28th and a half, that it's not going to be happening in August, prices are going to fall again. And I think we, and here's, I, I don't know what the future holds. But I am almost certain that we would see an $800 or $900 Ether with many other coins nearly collapsing. These constant delays are nonsense. I said at the beginning of this, I am not a coder. I do not create code. I, I attempted once at one point to use that, uh, um, I think it's called Code Academy, to try and code. No, not for me in my life. However... Many other coins have switched to proof of stake. Many other coins have started out at proof of stake. Many other coins have had the upgrades that they said that they were going to have for a very long time. I feel like six or seven years is kind of enough for people behind the scenes to be able to upgrade. Because even this upgrade that we're getting, for those of you who've also forgotten, isn't the entirety of Ethereum 2.0. It's the, right, uh uh-huh, yeah, 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 I know, I heard someone suck their teeth. It's the basis layer of Ethereum 2.0, and the finality of the other upgrades aren't expected until around the year 2025 until 2026. So this is just the basis, that's like someone laying a blanket on top of you. I know I'm, uh, you know, underappreciating the difficulty, it's not just someone laying a blanket, but that's kind of what it is. You laying in a bed and someone giving you the first layer of a blanket because you're cold. So, this was, of course, major news. There is, however, a lot of optimism across the board for the cryptocurrency market. There's a lot of news about being oversold, about prices being too low. You can check all of this in charts and they they have, I think it's called RSI. I I don't know what all these letters are the idea being 
You can check and see over the course of a long period of time exactly where prices were, how low they fell, and we tend to always, no matter what, stay within a trend line unless something digitally catastrophic ends up taking place. Uh, when said thing does happen, we tend to fall out of that trend line, and you've seen those charts before where the top is like either white or green, and the below is usually always in red when we have fallen below that line, and you can typically see hey, prices are a bit too low or dramatically low, and people have oversold, we should be a lot higher or at least at this price. This goes in line with what the people from uh, JP Morgan were telling us two weeks ago. They were saying that despite all of Bitcoin's this and that and where Bitcoin currently is because of the level of adoption and because of the current or the having that we are currently on, that Bitcoin should be was it 38,000? I think that was their number uh, for where Bitcoin should be right now. So that's the Ethereum news. Um, right. Also, in price news, for those of you who have not heard, uh, the protocol Celsius fell by 70% in one hour. On Sunday night, with crypto markets... <coughs> Already in free fall, controversial crypto lender Celsius announced it was suddenly pausing all customer withdrawals, swaps, and transfers. Backing it up, I have no money in Celsius. I do not know what Celsius is. I, I frankly also, I don't care about all of these DeFi projects. However, I will say it's very funny because I noticed the trends on a number of websites. When any of these protocols are doing well... Whenever these people are making tons of money, it's always in the news as a very positive thing. However, when prices fall for a project or something happens, it's then written as a controversial crypto lender. No one actually cares when these things are making them money or even the people who wrote these articles. No one ever... don't. What was that guy from uh, Shark Tank? Can't remember his name. Kevin O'Leary, this guy. A lot of you might have forgotten this. Always keep the news in mind because it's very important. It's so important to look back, at least for me, at the past to see what's happened and see where we currently are in the market. Because in a year's time, we will be looking at these events from today as a jumping off point once again. You remember when Kevin O'Leary was making tons of money in DeFi? This was a year, a year and a half ago. I can't give you an exact time frame, but it was not now. An enormous amount of money. And a lot of other billionaires began to get into the DeFi space because they were making tons of money every single day. They were champions for the space. They were talking about how great it was, how amazing it was. DeFi was the future. Why was DeFi the future? Because they were making tons of money. They were making probably millions of dollars every single day because of these incredibly high yearly returns that these protocols give at some point, one of the protocols that he was in, I think, got hacked. It slowed down. They stopped withdrawals. Something happened. And the very next day, this man went on to the news and was talking about how the whole space needs to be regulated. He can't believe that a space like this is allowed to exist. And it was only because he began to lose money. Not saying that uh, we don't need some type of framework in line to make sure that people don't lose their money. But the, the, the human condition is a very funny one. As long as I'm making money, I don't care any about, about anybody else. The moment I begin to lose money, where's the protection? Why, why, why are we not being saved by the SEC? Because I bet you a million Bitcoin, which I do not have, uh, this man definitely was probably even thinking of, we don't need any SEC in this space. It's, it's very, very fascinating how people work. But alas, he said, or they said, uh, this is um, Celsius, we are taking action, wait, we are taking this action today to put Celsius in a better position to honor over time its withdrawal obligations. That is weird. We are taking this necessary action for the benefit of our entire community in order to stabilize liquidity and operations while we take steps to preserve and protect assets. Furthermore, customers will continue to accrue rewards during the pause in line with our commitment to our customers. The idea being, they can't help you now, they're trying to help you in the future. 
Apparently, if you are locked into their protocol, you will still be able to receive your rewards as you were before. You simply cannot withdraw them. The company's CEL token quickly reacted, dropping 70% in one hour from the prior high of 49 cents to around 15 cents on coin market cap. And there's the dramatic drop right there. Of course, because people have forgotten about the 16 other events, they remember only the two other dramatic ones. Crypto investors on Twitter drew comparisons to the recent Terra collapse as well as to BitConnect. Um, we will see what happens. I don't think this feels like a, a BitConnect kind of moment. Uh, the people from BitConnect, I don't think even gave customers attention as to saying, hey, something's wrong. We're trying to work on it. It was simply silence. And that's why, for those of you who don't know what BitConnect is, you can find a little mini documentary or something on it. It was uh, it was Terra Luna, but more scammy. Like Terra Luna was ridiculous in what happened, but BitConnect was an entirely different monstrosity and that a number of YouTubers, and I know, oh my gosh, uh, I assume a lot of those people who told me to get into BitConnect are definitely not listening. That was a, a time to be in the cryptocurrency markets. Uh, back then, there weren't thousands of, of crypto YouTubers uh, hyping you up and telling you to get into the market. There were maybe around 15 or 20 of us. I know that seems a bit difficult to even imagine. There were people who uh, gave the news, like me, maybe only three or four of us, very, very few there was a guy who used to be in like a clown costume with like gigantic glasses. That was really weird. Uh, there was the guy who played poker. I think I don't remember what this guy's name was. Um, and then there were like <laughs> the original hype beasts of the cryptocurrency space. And all these people were into BitConnect and kept on telling people to get into it. Put more money into it. You got to put more money because they were showing people on their YouTube channels how much money that they were making from everyone else buying into the market. And some of these people, I'll never forget, were making like 8 Bitcoin a day. Think about that. Imagine making 8 Bitcoin a day and they were bragging to other people how much money they made. And then all of a sudden, oh, there were so many people telling me in the comment section to promote it because it was going to help out my viewers. It was going to help out other people. And I was like, I'm pretty sure that's not real it looks kind of pyramidy, and I stayed back and watched as the entire thing collapsed. Um, once again, just to throw this out there, I know only four people are going to actually listen, so golf clap to you four people. If it looks wrong, it probably is. If someone's offering you a 29% a yearly return, those numbers are not realistic, and no coin, no company, no project, no stock market anything can actually keep up with those numbers. It's simply not possible. Um, once again, to you four people, I tip my hat to thee because you have probably uh, gained a little bit of knowledge. Uh, to everyone else who didn't listen, I've tried. So, yeah, um, they allegedly claimed that market conditions are currently very steep terrible, excessive, and allegedly they cannot deal with it. And as such, they have uh, paused nearly everything on their network. Excuse me if I am incorrect. I assume this was a DeFi platform, a decentralized platform. How are all of these decentralized platforms able to halt operations without proper network consensus? How are all these decentralized platforms able to restart their blockchains? I feel like I'm missing something and no one else is actually getting it. Um, but yeah, so um, hopefully they allow people to take their money off. I don't assume that's going to be happening anytime soon. I'm telling you from a logical standpoint, if they didn't allow it a couple of hours ago, and prices are still falling now, people are probably not going to be able to get their money off of it. I would assume the Celsius token is going to continue falling <coughs> as people are unable to get their money off of the uh, platform. 
I would give it until Friday. I know that sounds like a long time from now. Uh, I give Friday as to if our market will rebound, if they will announce something. Uh, I don't know what exactly is you know going on here, but it feels like it's not something good. Isn't it kind of weird that every all these protocols are dropping like flies every four days now? Seems a little a bit weird, at least to me. Um, in optimism news, yeah, the DeVere Group has predicted a bull run and a significant bounce for Bitcoin and the wider cryptocurrency market at the end of this year. Their idea being prices are too low um, and they're going to go higher. Period. That's that's not even a joke. I would go through the article with you, but that's basically the kind of takeaway is that prices are very low. They may go lower. People will get greedy. If the stock market gets greedy, the crypto market will get greedier and then prices will bounce back. And uh, apparently uh, the last three months, four months, three months of the year are when they are expecting a major bounce back in price. Um, yeah, optimism. Woo! Also, in the news, for those of you who have not heard, and this is also why I believe uh, we saw the cryptocurrency market tank like it currently is right now. Once again, understand, um, we are controlled by as much as we might not like to admit it, uh, the stock market. And the current global stock market is looking quite bad. For those of you not looking at the screen, it says global sell-off deepens as stocks, bonds, and the yen all slump. This one says stock market slide over global economy concerns. And this one just goes out and says it. Is the stock market going to crash again? We are currently in a very peculiar time, I think, not only in history, but also in monetary everything. Cryptocurrencies, for those of you who have forgotten, were created as a way for us to escape the old monetary system. I know, weird, right? I have always felt like if we only had around maybe 10 different coins, I think we'd be in a very, very different spot in the market right now. I think we would be seen as a bit of a safe haven because we would probably be over a $300,000 Bitcoin because the market would have consolidated a lot of its prices into simply the top coins that had actually upgraded, that had actually worked, that were actually quick and nimble and amazing and be able to be built on from the very beginning. However, the cryptocurrency market is a gigantic bowl of slop. And as such, uh, tons of people who've gotten into the market just to simply play it for the numbers uh, are from older markets. And as they feel affected by any type of news, our market is also attacked and f thrown down the exact same way. As such, um, the old, I mean, the last Nine years have been absolutely terrible uh, for a lot of people in different ways. A lot of times people measure um, economic success by the stock market, regardless of if all that money was actually fake from the get-go and how much money was pushed into it by people who simply print money uh, to make markets stay afloat so that they could get richer and richer. The really weird thing, even I, I, I looked over to the side, for those of you not looking at the screen, there's a, a, a free stock report. It says these five shares could be great for building wealth over the age of 50. I've been chatting with so many people the last couple of months, just in general, not even because of the last two years. Of course, yes, that's trying to make sure that everyone is okay, at least mentally, but also just monetarily. Hey, you okay? What's going on? How are things? Because people tend to come to me, at least in my friends group, as the as the money guy. I get those texts. I get those messages a lot. But even sitting with people, hanging out with people, um, I've noticed that a lot of people are not doing well. And I mean from a really 
um, dramatic standpoint, like, I've never saved, I've never put money away, I don't know what to do, my um, rent has gone up, my electricity, my gas, my water has gone up, I don't know if I can stay, like, stay where I'm living, my boss has denied my raise, it's a whole bunch of things happening, I'll, I'll tell you what's going on. I've been chatting with a lot of my friends once again. We always look for new ways to invest our money. We've been scouring the internet to try and find new ways or places to put our money during the economic downturn. Um, I've mentioned to a lot of you before, I collect physical art. I love buying prints. I love buying sculptures. I love buying all these things. It's just who I am. It's And I, and I think I'll have this uh, collection thing in my head for art for a very long time. Um... Sorry, I completely lost track of where I was going. Um, ah, yeah, no, it's it's basically I'm I'm doing this as as a way to I've I've learned that art tends to outperform uh, stock markets in a positive way, even when prices are going down. But the amount of friends who I've I was just oh my gosh, so funny. I I don't think he's watching, <coughs> but hello to you if you are. One of my really good friends who lives on the other side of the world. Um, we still try and chat quite often about money and stuff like that. And he sent me a screenshot a couple of days ago. It was no more than two days ago. He was telling someone, um, this is his idea. He said, markets are down. Uh, maybe you should try and put some money not only into the stock market, but maybe, maybe also the cryptocurrency market as prices may recover at some point and you may get in at a, at a very good price. And I mean, he sent an entire paragraph really trying to explain to this person uh, how to make money in, in, in a down market. And the person wrote back, and I quote, no, comma, I'm okay. And we were just talking about this, This, sorry, it's, it's just so much to really talk about at one time. We were talking about this idea of people never being able to retire and people not putting any money away and people not... I've tried to explain to my friends for at least 12 years, at least 12 years, how to make money, how to put money away, how to have something for retirement. I think none of my friends are going to be able to retire. I have a handful of friends. I can count on my one hand, and I dare even say it's only four of those who have actually listened to me, uh, who have put money away, who have invested uh, who purchased things when I was talking about, you know, maybe you should buy into this. And they made pretty good money. Nothing incredibly life-changing, but they made high five figures and it's more than they would have had had they not gotten into any market. But with inflation raging, people not being into any market, I really just wonder what's going to happen to normal people. And, and I say normal as in, you know, not us, not that we are special by any means. But you get what I'm saying. Where what's ha what's happening to their bank accounts with a, with a, with a nine percent inflation per year? They can barely buy stuff at, at the supermarket. It's all these things go through my head all the time, and I'm constantly thinking about it because if inflation isn't transitory and it's not going away, what are these people going to be doing in nine to ten years? Like, think of that. Think of where things were in 2020. They were already rocky, money-wise. 2022, not so hot. Imagine by 2032, everyone will be 10 years older. I have so many friends who I, and one in particular, who I tried to explain to. I said, you will get older. Your fingers will begin to hurt. Your your joints will hurt. My joints are already hurting. My my back hurts sometimes if I try to pick up a pencil too fast. It's like, you're not going to want to work. Start putting some money away. This person is not in any retirement plan. They have opted out of all of them. They save no money. And I was like, when you're like 50, you're not going to want to work as much. They suck their teeth and they were like, I'll make do. Oh my gosh. I remember one of my other friends told me years ago, he said he had these neighbors, I, I get like I guess literal neighbors, like right next door. And he would see them come out of their home house apartment, and they and they were, I mean, dressed extravagantly. He said they were in their mid-40s, maybe early 50s. I don't remember the exact number, but this was 2014, he told me about this. 
And I mean wearing Louis Vuitton belts, Louis Vuitton slacks. I mean like a nice button down shirt. Like you could, you know, the one that you can tell was around $800 or so. Little cute Pomeranian. Everything was so nice. So eventually he was like, I want to get to know these people. Like I want to kind of know their story. And he spoke to them and he was like, how? <laughs> Question mark. You know, what what uh, what do you guys do in life? And they were like, you know, we, we work relatively normal jobs. But they put all of their money. They, they, they got a really good deal through a friend uh, who owned a portion of the building or something like that to stay inside one of the smallest apartments. And I think their rent was seven or eight hundred dollars. And that, you know, that is astronomical anywhere or astronomically good right now anywhere. But this was somewhere in the States. And he was like, wow, that's so lucky. And he was also into finance. Sorry for telling you all this stuff. There's just so much on my mind about like money. And he was um, discussing with them like, hey, I invest. Have you guys ever put any money away? You guys, you know, preparing for the future? Because he said he looked at them and they looked a little bit older. What have you? Once again, we will all age. And they told him, no, we don't have to. He said, why don't you have to? They said, because we have a really cheap apartment. We live the life that we want to live. We're always traveling. You know, we don't make an extravagant amount of money, but because of our low rent, we can do all these things potentially forever. He said he knew these, I mean, for, for at least two or three years, he saw them living next to him. They had been living there for a while. He was a recent move-in. And one day he saw one of them sitting on like the steps of the house or the building or something. He's like, hey, what's up? What's going on? And they looked devastated. And he's like, are you okay? They're like, yeah, we have to we have to move. Something, I think it was a falling out with a friend who was letting them live there. And then reality hit them really hard <clears throat> that they had to find a new place to live. They had to find a new apartment. If you were keeping track of the story, they didn't save money. They didn't have enough, <laughs> not even for, for first month. They didn't have the deposit. They didn't have the first or the last month or a security, they had nothing. Where were they going to go? So much is happening, not only in the world, but also financially right now. And I do have, I don't want to use the word faith. I think that's very strong for such a manipulated market that we're in. And that is crypto and the stock market, to be completely clear. But it's this really weird... I know that the stock market at some point is going to go back up. The Federal Reserve knows at some point that the stock market is going to go back up. Uh, they're being told behind the scenes, regardless of what they print, they're being told by other people when the market has to fall and when the market has to go back up, when we have to have a recession or when all these things need to take place. Because at some point, the rich will get impatient and they need to make money once again and prices will go back up. The people who tend to benefit from this are the people who stay inside of the markets. Do you remember in 2018, 2019, um, I, was, I, was, I was a little down, I won't lie. The cryptocurrency market wasn't going back up. And I told everyone, I was like, at some point it will. And the people who will end up making the most money from this market will be the people who buy. This is not financial advice. The idea was, you know, People who stay inside the market or who buy when prices are low, they'll they'll do fine as prices skyrocket back up. But it's kind of the everyone else who I'm always really worried about, at least uh, for me. Um, yeah, sorry for the big, uh, what do you call it, um, segue there. Uh, but yeah, the entire world marketplace is uh, doing bad. All of it. So I know that you're probably going to hear a lot of news over the course of today, maybe even tomorrow, uh, that Bitcoin is falling because of the bears. Bitcoin is falling because of the RSI. Bitcoin is falling because of the wedge. Bitcoin is falling. No, 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 uh, Nearly the entirety of the world is collapsing right now. Ne nearly the entirety of. Um, I think we are going to continue to see a stock market sell-off because I think the 15th of June is also meant to be, I think, the 15th of June, I think, is also meant to be one of the days where the Fed uh, raises interest rates once again. And I believe it was also July 15th, I think, 
as well that we were also hearing. So it's more of a uh, look forward to those dates kind of thing to really uh, see where the market is going to go because if they sell off, we also sell off. So I'm anticipating wholeheartedly, I mean, not even joking, an $800 Ethereum. I think it's going to hit really hard. I think even during today, as people hear that possibly the Ethereum uh, network update is, is delayed once again, people are going to be frustrated and start moving their money around. Um, I hope, I don't think anybody from the Ethereum team watches this at all. Um, give us a date. Give us an actual date or be completely honest with us. I, 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 I think the, 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 the very light lies have become very tiresome. They know what's going on. They know if it's impossible. They know if they can't do it. They know if they simply have to say, hey, we, we, we can't do this at all. Or it's going to take us until 2025. Um, stringing people along for this long is going to be very dential to the entirety of the cryptocurrency market. And I think it just kind of needs to stop. Uh, give us a date. As all the test nets have been running, tell us when you are done with this final test net. When that's over, does it look good now? Does August seem viable? Or is it actually going to be December? Because if it's December, that means next February. If it's next February, that means next May. Just say that you can't do the upgrade. Let people kind of move on because, yeah, don't forget, we were also told January of this year. You can look back at news from 2021 around August. The news that was going around was November, December. Because I remember, I, I remember I was cold. I remember it was very cold. I was outside. I was reading on my phone. And I got very hyped to make a video about it. Because I was like, December seems like a good enough time frame. Cool, let's do it. And by the time we hit December, they said, no, 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 no. The time frame was January. And when we got to January, they were like, May seems really believable. And they remember, I think in, in January or February at some conference, somebody said the word June out loud. And as we got closer to June, somebody at a conference said August. That's all the price news. I know it was a bit of a doozy. There's a lot going on. What can I say? Um, we were completely overdue for a stock market crash. Um, it is happening. I think it will continue to happen. And I personally do not think it will be the worst thing ever. I think really coming back down to earth... And being able to look at the situation and say, ah, prices were a bit too high. These particular companies were overvalued. And, and I guess we're also having our own little stock market crash in the crypto space with all these coins dropping by 70% and these protocols failing. If you can do it, do it. If you cannot, you are going to be flushed away in the cryptocurrency market. I have always said, I think our market will be a lot safer and a lot stronger if we don't have over 50,000 coins. It just seems nonsensical to even have more than a top 100 of these coins that do absolutely nothing except for promise people these very high interest rates that they cannot deliver. Anyway, <clears throat> that's all the price news, at least for right now. I'm feeling like this is going to be a bit of a dramatic week. Not really sure why, but it's kind of in the air. And without further ado, let's move on. Also in very popular, unpopular news, if you will, the co-founder of Yuga Labs, the people who made the Bored Ape Yacht Club, his name is Gordon Goner, has raised the alarm over a potential attack on the project's social media accounts. In particular, Gordon Goner states that there were plans to compromise the project's Twitter accounts using an inside source to bypass their security. He also clarified that there was no ongoing mince. A lot of these projects um, have had their Twitter accounts hacked and have announced that there's going to be another secret mint for people holding this coin. Hey you, are you holding a Board Ape Yacht Club NFT? Click this link very quick. We're doing a, a secret mint. I know some of you have <coughs> stopped and went, well, that sounds really stupid. 
You have to understand, these things are worth hundreds of thousands of dollars. If people hear that, there's another secret mint going on just for them to give them another half a million dollars, people are going to fall for it. He said, we've received credible information that there may soon be an attack on our social media account using an inside source at Twitter to bypass our security. <clears throat> there are no surprise mints ever. So basically, this is a, a public service announcement that he stated that I am sending to all of you. There will be no surprise mints. I think anything that they announce... <coughs> Sorry, just woke up. You know the deal. Um, will be mentioned beforehand by the actual team. Uh, this is quite widespread right now. People are making uh, fake Twitter accounts, one that I also fell for. I told you about that last week. Or they're jumping on the backs of other well-known projects. You only need 20 minutes. 20 minutes to get control of a Twitter account uh, with no one noticing and everyone ends up clicking on a link and ends up getting 47,000 retweets. And that's just kind of how it goes. So yeah, try to be vigilant. I, I Once again, I know it's very difficult. Um, airdrops do happen in the space. Surprise, su su surprise mins do also happen within the space. So there are a lot of times where people do have these things and they do end up making money. So a lot of times, once again, when we can't keep up with everything and we read something, it does sound credible, at least in that moment. And this is how people end up losing money. So yeah. Just make sure to watch out because with the market dropping, everyone's looking to even bad people are looking to make money and it's getting a little rough out there. And to finish things off, yeah, uh, Bitcoin, it says, is continuing to fly off of exchanges amid price stagnancy. This is according to the crypto analytics firm Into the Block. I don't have to read through the article. We've had news about this for the last two weeks. As prices continue to fall, uh, something miraculous is happening. Uh, normally, when prices are falling quite heavily in the cryptocurrency space, people are putting their coins onto a crypto exchange to sell them in a panicked manner. Um, however, uh, this time, while prices are falling, uh, people are actually, you would, you would not know by the price drops, uh, but whales are actually buying on cryptocurrency exchanges and then taking their coins off of these exchanges in mass quite rapidly, showing that they're accumulating uh, in anticipation of a bull run at some point over the next couple of months or however long it's actually going to take. But yeah, there's definitely a, um, a clear trend happening. Uh, where rich people are not selling their coins, they're only buying more coins, and they're taking off half a billion to a billion dollar plus at a time per day off of cryptocurrency exchanges. So very interesting time to be in the market. Yeah. Weird day. I know. I know. I know it's only Monday. Is it Monday? Thank goodness. I was like, oh gosh, it's not even Monday. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Let's move on. As always, a very special thank you to my Patreon supporters. GBU Wally, Bubble Mode, How's Life Austin, Auspicious Agile and Blockchain, Jamie Saad, Blockchain Simplified, and let's move on, Empire Queen, Roman Geba, Bitcoin Ben, Arachno Dave, Tony Ambrosi, The Dealer's Den, Captain Something in the Z-Way Lay, Mobarazi, VB Nerd 21, Miguel Grolet, Lauren De Silva, Quoted Biddy, Troy Allgood, Space Case, Need a Miracle, Pat Turnoster, Navarro Williams, Utopia 569, Moonman High, XRP, Martin Stoyo, Nostromo, John Sarson, The Animal Reader, A Bibliophobia, Todd Mullis, Adam Grasick, Wise Night Owl, 242 to the World, Bankroll Network, Crypto Artist, Cold E3D, Setsuna, Richie Rich the Third, Paxis, Nick Mangialavori, Jim Gardner, Jeremy Fox, Minting Coins, Yes to Crypto, Bodie McBoatface, I was like, where am I? Bodie McBoatface, Anytime Fitness Monks, Corner Staff, Bake Me a Cake, Tigara Macho Nisa, On Crypto with Lionel, and Crayola Michelle URL. Thank you. Thank you very, very much for your continuous support. Like, I really do mean it. Um, I appreciate it more than you could begin to imagine. Thank you to everyone who has left a like, to everyone who has left a comment, 
To everyone who's still here, after all the not-so-great news, uh, listening to me talk about this market. At the moment, Bitcoin is at $25,165. It is down by 8.2%. Ethereum is at $1,317. It is down by 9.3%. Uh, you can see the uh, try to moves up and then fall back down. I assume once again after this news of the delay became public. I don't have to tell you <laughs> how much... Uh, all the coins are currently down right now, but some of them are double digits. Uh, Unis said Leo is bucking the trend with a, uh, it's up by 0.07%. I guess that's something. I assume nearly every coin is going to be in the red, except, okay, Decentraland is up by 1%. Not really sure how they're doing that, but <clears throat> good luck to them. Yeah. Um, for those of you who are new to the market... I believe I tried to warn you at some point a year or two ago, this happens. If you are new to this market or to any market, it's literally just how things are. There is always a down period, especially, I'm sure you must have heard of the cryptocurrency market back in 2014, 2017, 2018, 2020. Our market tends to go down, and when it does, it goes down by a lot. So the inverse is also true, but yeah, I do hope that you've all enjoyed. I do hope that you all are having a great day, a great morning, great afternoon, a great evening, wherever you are, wherever you might be. I hope it's absolutely fantastic. Thank you all once again for watching, listening, liking, commenting, subscribing, and or supporting, and I will most certainly be talking to you all soon. See you.